Excellent. That's good. All right. Okay. First thing I'm going to get you to do, going up and down on your tiptoes. So my background, I've been a sports physio for 25 years, and one of the reasons why I developed this class with Ange is because um, it allowed for... Cancel that. It allowed for us to showcase the importance of getting the core right in everyday life. So this program, as I'm doing this, as we teach this, it's about allowing you to have a better core to function in everyday life in terms of work, uh, in terms of lifestyle. As you do this now, I'm going to get you to add arms. So arms up and down, up and down. As you go up, what are you doing? Breathing in or out? Diego, you want to go first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're breathing in, exactly. So when your arms are going up, you're breathing in. And the reason for that is, as you go up on your tiptoes, your base of support is smaller. And with your arms going overhead, there's a certain level of imbalance. So what happens is diaphragm pushes down as you breathe in, and pelvic floor kicks in and this di uh, big muscle called transversus makes this a very solid unit. Now try it with your feet close together. Decrease that base of support. Arms up and down. And if you were to do this correctly, it looks like a nice straight line from shoulders down to ankles. Yeah. Done incorrectly, you'd be leaning back, or going forward, so you want to try and maintain a nice straight line up and down, like that. Keep going, 30 more seconds. This is a really good exercise for the calf muscles. I start off with this because we do spend a lot of time on our, at our desks and in sedentary life, we don't use the calf muscles enough. So this brings that back. Also, this exercise allows you to take mobility through the shoulders because we only ever use our arms in this plane, zero to 90. And usually it's in this range from here down to here. Bringing it up really works on getting the shoulder muscles working and also... Unless you blow dry your hair. Right? Unless you blow dry your hair, yes. <laughs> oh, you're stuck. Very good. You can go to the class too if you like. Okay. All right. There's a mat at the back. Sure. And you can grab your book and take notes if you like. Yeah. And stop there. Give your arms and legs a bit of a shake. Yeah. Now, just standing there, feet together, I want you to go sideways. Now you're going sideways, nice and tall, nice and upright. And as you do this, I want you to do one thing. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and really feel that movement where your arms are bisecting the side of your body. Nice and easy. You will notice that as you're doing this, your arms might come forward. The tendency to come forward. Tendency, tends, tendency to move right back. I just want a nice straight line. Breathing in as you go up and down. This is a really good exercise to improve the control through the core, but nothing that does is it adds and gets the neck functioning properly. Guess how heavy your head is? You want to have a guess? Five kilos. Yes! <laughs> Top student, Christo. <laughs> five kilos. So when five kilos, is sitting right above your heart, that's five kilos. A lot of times, what do we do? We're like this, we're like this. That five kilos can go up to about 10, doing this, and then you'll see a lot of people on the street, on their phones, it goes up to about 25 kilos. That's a lot of tension going through all the muscles and joints through the back. 
15 more seconds, keep going. So here we're optimizing how the shoulders work and we're optimizing how the neck <coughs> control works for that upper extremity. Everyone's doing that really well. And stop there. Give your arms and legs a bit of a shake. Good. Now you're going to be lying down. So I'm just going to tilt the camera down so people at home can see me. You're going to be lying down and to start off with, bend the knees up. You're bringing arms above your head like this, breathing in, breathing out. Nice straight line from hips down to shoulders. Just go this way for the camera as well. Nice straight line from hips to shoulders, bringing arms up and down. When your arms are up towards past the ears, the tendency might be to arch your back up. I don't want you to arch up. Maintain the same pressure. Maintain the same pressure right through. So you'll notice a certain level of pressure the back is giving the mat, or the mat is provided on the on your back, the spine. You want to maintain that. Breathing in and out. Not stopping at any stage, nice consistent movement. And in 10 seconds, you're going to bend your left knee up. The left knee is then pointing, the kneecaps pointing to the roof and the ankles pointing to the roof or the toes are pointing to the roof. Off you go. Left knee up. And just point this up like so. Perfect. Everyone's good. Breathing in, breathing out. So what we've gone and done is made the base of support smaller. So having one leg up, like so, makes that core work a little bit harder. 90 degrees. And I recommend you're always looking, uh, say if you had a reflection at home to look at yourself do this, or you had a video to watch, re-watch, so put uh, your video on or put your camera on and then re-watch your movement pattern. It's very good for you. Now swap legs, so arms continue up and down. Good. Breathing in, breathing out. Nice consistent movement. <clears throat> so this is the second of the series on this program. And over this course, we're really going to create muscle memory, muscle control. And once again, the repetitive nature of these exercises mean that it becomes normal movement or your body realizes this is normal movement. Therefore, your core starts activating and engaging better at work. Everyone's doing this really well with control. Now, let's make it harder, both legs up. So both legs up, knees together, feet together. Good, and off you go. If the low back starts hurting with this one, just go to what you can tolerate. So for everyone at home, legs go up. And continuing up and down, nice control. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. <clears throat> now we've got a much smaller base of support. The core control and that core area has to work a lot harder.
And notice your arms are doing a great job. Creating this awareness of posture as you go through. 15 more seconds. Keep going. Keep holding the form. Good. And stop there. Drop the legs down. Relax the arms. And in this position, what I'd like you to do is drop the legs from side to side. So it would look like this. <clears throat> You're going to let your arms outstretched like this. And just let your legs drop side to side good and are we breathing in or out while we're doing this yes yes oh, we are it's a little bit of my humor guys my wife tells me please don't crack jokes when you run classes do seminars reminds me i'm not funny but i i don't think so Keep going side to side. Now close your eyes and notice as you do that where your movement's coming from in your spine. Whether it's the upper spine, mid spine, through the hips. Notice where the tight areas are. Close your eyes and let it rotate out. Thirty more seconds. <clears throat> and as you improve with this, as you drop the legs side to side, notice whether the opposite shoulder stays on the ground or not, because it also helps in the improvement of mobility. So now we're moving the spine in a pattern that it's not used to, or we don't hardly we hardly move the spine in this rotating manner. 70% of our body is what? Tough, tough crowd. Water. So as, I mean, we were designed to move. And unfortunately, we don't move in the right planes. So this allows for that to happen. Creates mobility. This is a really easy exercise to do if you're working from home, after Zoom calls, get on the ground. Getting on the ground is much better than doing it on a bed because the bed can be, uh, it, it might just make everything too floppy. Even a firm mattress, you don't get the best effect as what you are doing on the ground. Excellent. And now, you can sit up and watch the next progression. The next progression, you're lying face down on your tummy and you're coming up. What's this movement called in yoga? Is it a cobra? Cobra. Up and down. You want to come up like a cobra. You want to come up like a cat stretching. So up and down. Close your eyes as you do this. I want you to notice where that movement's happening, starting, starting at the head, neck, between the shoulder blades, shoulders, and elongating your tummy. The number one mistake people make with this exercise is right at the very top, we tend to squeeze our bottom, okay? Right at the very top, Right here, just to get that extra bit of extension, you'll squeeze your bottom. I want you to stop doing that. If you're squeezing your bottom, you're getting an irregular movement pattern. We don't want that. So coming up all the way, just notice if your gluteal muscles are clenching, and we don't want that to happen. You're breathing in on the way up, <clears throat> and breathing out. Now make it a bit harder, bring your feet and knees together. That adds a lot of requirement or control to the core. 
This is a wonderful exercise for your arms because you'll end up getting stronger arms and because you're doing everything with the proper alignment, it improves your neck and shoulder musculature. It improves your shoulder blade and the control within the shoulder blade, which then prevents it from going into this position or when we are in these positions on the computer, it just helps make everything a lot stronger. <clears throat> if that's hard on the hands and wrists, you can change it up. So you can actually push up just with elbows if it's hard on the wrists. Just like that. And now close your eyes and do that. And notice where you feel the body is moving. Feel where you're getting most mobility. <clears throat> this practice of moving and then closing your eyes to do it, you learn a lot about how your body moves and you get an internal awareness of proper body movement. So the first exercise, the calf, building that up, building tolerance for everyday life, then using the arms over 90 degrees and then this which builds on neck, shoulder, shoulder blade, therefore improving posture. Ten more seconds. Good work. And rest down, just relax for a moment. I want to show you the next progression. The next progression will look like this. You're on all fours. Your wrists are below your shoulders, your hip, uh, your knees below your hip, and you're kicking one leg out. As you kick one leg out, I want you to maintain a nice straight line from shoulder to hip. Nice straight line from here to here. When this is done correctly, it's a lovely straight line. Usually what I see is this, and you see this on a lot of social media. They're like, oh, really push that leg out. You'll see that it's lacking that control or the spine's moving all over the place. I don't want that spine moving. I want a nice straight line, like so. Let's try that. So what it looks like for those at home, leg goes out and in, nice straight line from shoulder to hip. You want your eye line at your fingertips, so when things become a little bit uncomfortable, we tend to tuck our chin in. You want to keep a nice straight line, head in line with heart, heart in line with pelvis. Nice straight line, very good. A lot of times when you kick that leg out too much, you're losing that control through that core. We're building a solid foundation, which is built on control and mobility, but it's you're controlling that mobility. Therefore, that's improving the core. <clears throat> now, if this is hard on your wrists, you can make a fist. So you can use a fist to do this, if it's hard on fists, you can go on elbows. Either way is fine. And swap sides. Everyone's form is very good, by the way. You guys are doing this really well. If you're doing this at home and you want to practice any of these exercises at home, I'd recommend the ones that you find difficult here, those are the ones your body needs. And you only have to do two minutes over a 30 day period to really
become competent in it and for that muscle memory to kick in and continue working well. Excellent, you guys are doing very well. Ten more seconds and then we're going to do the next progression. And stop there. Let's give your arms a bit of a shake. After working out and say you've been in a restricted position for a while, you just want to give everything a bit of a shake. Because once again, you're 70% fluid, you're meant to be moving. So after an engaging exercise like that, you just want to get things moving. Neck, shoulders, back, you know, torso, anything, get it moving. Next, you're going to be up like so, you can have your feet like this, arms up, and you're pretty much going to be leaning back like that, and coming up. Leaning back, nice straight line from shoulders to knees. So, nice straight line, shoulders to knees, Going back and coming up. If you're dropping at the hips, that's no good. So I don't want you dropping at the hips. Some of my athletes say, oh, so look at me, look at me. No, you've dropped, that's no good. You have to go back and up. You can have your feet up like this or you can have your feet down like that. It doesn't really matter. So it's pretty much that and coming up. How far back you go, it doesn't matter how far back you can go, as long as you can come back up. Good. A bit tougher, isn't it? You like this one? Oh, no, that's I'm the one you practice at home. Last week from this one, thanks. What's that? I'm still sore from last week from this one. From this one? Yeah. Mm. So if you become too sore, you can have your legs apart. Okay? That means it's a little bit easier. So having your legs apart for everyone at home you're getting a better or bigger base of support. I think the problem was this, that like he had asked us to close our eyes and then everyone stopped and you guys were chatting because it was the end of the Oh, you were continuing. And I was going for like another few minutes and then I opened my eyes, I was like, what? Oh, okay, that's <laughs> Yeah, fine. that was it. <laughs> this didn't help. Now, when it's tough like this, natural tendency is to do this. We're going to shrug our shoulders, yeah? Just relax. You want to have as much space between your ear and your shoulder and keep the alignment back and forward. So this is a lovely exercise for your quads. Brings you back, gives you a lot of control and on the way up, abdominals or getting that inner core working. So if this is a tough one for you, two minutes a night. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The aim is to get to two minutes, but if you can't, that's okay. You're doing the right thing. You try 15 seconds, rest, relax, off you go again, and you will build up that tolerance. Excellent. Also, when you're doing it at home, talk to someone while doing it. Because if you can talk to someone, you're actually breathing right. It's very hard to... How's it going? It's very hard to hold your breath. So when you're naturally talking, you're breathing. Otherwise we tend to forget that. How does it feel in the arms? It's good, isn't it? All right, give your arms a bit of a break. Let's continue working on the lean. Okay, just leaning back. If this is tough on knees, sometimes people after operations, it's tough to kneel. Just double up your mat. Double up your mat, so roll it up. So you're getting a bit of cushioning. Good, keep going. Nice. And let's do 30 more seconds, arms out. Work this hard. Good control. Breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. It's when you start getting tired, you lose your form. So when you get tired, you'll 
So the slouch of this will go up. You'll drop at the hips, maintain that. This is vital where you can watch yourself looking in a mirror or video yourself and you can re-watch it. That's how you can improve. And that's how many of my elite athletes improve. Okay, stop there. Give everything a bit of a shake. Standing up. Give your arms a bit of a shake. Stretch out areas that are really tight. Next, I want to open up hips. So, hip opening, this is the movement here. Standing, knee comes up, rotates out. Knee comes up, rotates out. You can have one hand on back, one hand on tummy, and you want to try and maintain a nice straight line as you do this. Yeah? So for everyone at home, it looks like that. Nice and controlled, nice and upright as you do this. If it's hard to get the balance, focus on a spot on the ground and maintain that. Nice control. And once you get your balance and your mobility, what you're doing is you're looking to see whether alignment, head over heart, over pelvis. Nice, consistent line. This hip opening, uh, the movement of the hip opening, we tend not to have in everyday life because uh, hips are either forward uh, and also not much in as well. So out and in doesn't happen. This just opens the hips up quite nicely. Also what this does is for the standing leg, so the leg that's standing, you'll start feeling a burn. So that's a good thing. And swap sides. Do the other side. Nice and upright. Good. Really good control, do you? What sport do you play? Ah. So that's a solid sport for movements like this. Good. Our latest research that I'm conducting, we're finding a lot of involvement with lack of hip mobility, not just forward and backwards, but the rotation of the hip, so in and out, to cause a lot of pain problems through the back, neck and shoulders, and also the knees. So. We're delving into a lot of research, well I'm delving into a lot of research where we're looking at hip mobility to uh, evaluate how our whole nervous system or the neuromuscular system can then combine to work together. Now swap sides, okay? Swap sides, do the other leg. And once you get good at this, you can have your hands in the original position I want you to try and close your eyes. Close your eyes, so I'm not very good at this. This will let you know how much of an impact your balance is based on vision. <clears throat> Closing eyes. And what we're still trying to do is improve and control, improve the form. When I talk about form, it's the quality of motion within the range that you have. And when you become good at something, your range improves and the quality within that range improves. That's why you'd rather see Federer play tennis and not me, because my forehand only probably comes to here, his forehand probably goes all the way to the back, comes through and he's got a lot more range and he's got a lot more range through control. That's why it's so much nicer to watch elite athletes play their sport rather than amateurs. And swap legs. Swap legs. Swap legs and close your eyes. Do you think this exercise is useful in everyday life? If we're at desks? Look around. Yes, this is very useful. As I said, it helps open up the activating hip, but also 
the balancing leg, it's a pretty solid workout. 10 more seconds. And stop there. Arms a bit of a break, legs a bit of a break. Or shake. Now, you're going to stand there, arms up to here. This is something I devised during COVID for everyone. You're going to stand here, rotate left, rotate right. It's a nice straight line from elbow to elbow. Nice straight line. And as you do this, head over heart, heart over pelvis. So you're nice and tall as you rotate out. What it shouldn't look like is this. So you lose form or your arms drop. You want to have elbow to elbow, straight line, head to pelvis, straight line. And why we developed this during COVID is we sat a lot in Zoom calls, computer, studying, built up tension, neck problems, headaches, stress levels, anxiety, and all due to our musculoskeletal position. <clears throat> what this exercise does is creates control between the shoulder blade, creates control in your head, helps that five kilos rotate with control. And also you need very good abdominal area control. So once again, the diaphragm, pelvic floor, transversus, coming together and working. Who's feeling a burn in the shoulders? Quite nice, isn't it? No, for some. <laughs> it's not. Drop the arms down. Drop the arms down. Cross them over like this. And now rotate. Rotate around. Now it's just the line, head, shoulders, sorry, head, heart to pelvis. You want to stay upright as much as possible. Stay upright. Keep going. Keep going. Ten more seconds, and then I'll show you the progression. Nice and upright. Right at the end, just notice where you're feeling the stretch through the back, through the legs, through the neck. Arms a bit of a shake, legs a bit of a shake. We go back to this. In this position, as you turn, you drop your arm down. Drop your arm down. As you turn, you drop your arm down. Once again, a nice straight line from elbow to elbow, but you're adding on this rotation of your shoulder with the control. So as a functional test, which is a test that we use in everyday life, this is quite vital that you are able to do this because once again, you're getting this wonderful control through the shoulders, position of the head and neck is excellent, and you're allowing that stable base then to, or you're having a stable base for your arms to work. <clears throat> 30 more seconds. Keep going, everyone's doing this really well. Good control. <clears throat> the research shows that if you video yourself doing this, doing any exercise, and you watch it back, you can actually improve the quality of that movement very quickly because you are watching yourself doing something. And from a visualization perspective, uh, you only have to Imagine yourself doing it over 15 seconds. Repeat that over 50 times a day, which is not hard, 15 seconds, and stop there. 15 seconds, 50 times a day, and I think the data says three times a week, so you're always imagining doing it. 
and within a month you can really make a big change. I want to show you some progressions for the abs now. So it really helps with getting the control through here and it's just another progression out. First, you're going on all fours again, like so. You're kicking one leg out and choose the opposite arm. Opposite arm goes out, like so. Nice straight line. So this is for the back. When I say abs, you're getting control through the core. It's working the hamstring, glutes, and also shoulder blade out and in, out and in, and breathing in as you do this. So when arms go out, arms and legs both go out. That's it. Arms and legs both go out. When it's a bit harder, we naturally tend to tuck our chin into the chest. So keep the eye line at your fingertips. And swap sides. Everyone's really good. Ten more seconds. progression so we've done the back now the front so arms here legs here this is called a dead bug arms and legs like this as you do this and as you get into a rhythm if this becomes a little bit easy you go into a crunchy position like so yeah so this is getting that deeper muscles working and also the core deeper muscles and also your core but also your superficial abdominals so you start off like this, this is what it looks like and then you go into a crunchy position which is shoulder blades off breathing in breathing out very good guys excellent with control. This is a bit tougher. Yes, no? Yes. Ten more seconds. you to do is just relax completely I'm going to finish off with a breathing technique which we have now introduced to a lot of my elite athletes and it's all based on reducing reducing stress levels in a very short time period in this relaxed state as you're lying down like this let your legs outstretched out straight put both hands on your tummy both hands on your tummy, you can close your eyes so you feel the movement. I'm going to get you to take a deep breath in, as, as you breathe in, it's all with the nose, so you're breathing in with the nose, I want you to expand the tummy, so you really let your tummy go and expand out. So breathing in, tummy expands, and then as you let it out, all through the mouth. Breathing in. Out. 
as you can hear, going out is a lot longer than going in. So breathing in, expand the tummy, not the chest and not the shoulders. In through the nose, out through the mouth, and pursed lips. So, now during the next inhalation, at the end of it, I want you to take a sharp, short burst all through the nose. So it'll sound like this. Let's keep doing that. If you make noises as you do it, please go ahead. It's very good for you. Keep going. <clears throat> this breathing technique is called a physiological sigh. Uh, it was first seen and noticed in the 50s or the research started then and the current research shows that even doing one breath is enough to reduce cortisol levels. Cortisol is the stress hormone and unfortunately we endure excess amounts of cortisol in everyday life due to the natural nature of you know the modern world. So doing one of these will make a difference. I tell people to do four at a time. So before going into the next meeting, before uh, going into an interview, I'd pass this on to my students. In the sports world, before someone goes into bowl, before someone goes into serve, before the set starts, they recalibrate their system because this Breathing technique optimizes the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system and recalibrates it all. <clears throat> and if you end up doing five minutes a day over 30 days, the ongoing results uh, have shown to be very positive where your whole system is a lot calmer and the system is ready for you to do a task. So let's finish off the next 30 seconds, breathing in. Open your eyes slowly, sit back up, <clears throat> and explain the final bits of that breathing. So it's very important to breathe through the tummy because you're getting diaphragmatic breathing, which is getting the diaphragm working properly. So the hand coming out is very important. That quick inhalation in, we have alveoli, which is part of the lungs. Due to stress, they glue up and you don't, your lung volume goes down. So you pop them open. So you increase the chance of oxygenation. The slow breath out means you're not passing out carbon dioxide too quickly either. So slow and steady means everything is regulated better. It calms the brain down. Uh, the physiological breath, you see it naturally where? Where would you where have you seen this before? Anywhere? If you sorry? Yes, and also when you see children cry. 
that's what that is. So naturally we were built in the do that. So um, that's why, yeah, that's what the physiological sign is. Well done, guys. That's all right. Thank you. I'll see you again next week. And um, yeah, we'll continue doing these sessions and uh, seeing, seeing the changes. How was that? Oh, thank you, Christo. <laughs> so Christo is part of the team. You know, you'll see him in the future as well. Christo is doing his PhD in nutrition. And um, yeah, you'll see a fair few of our team coming in. So.